Starting off this part, Dusk Neuer is quite simply put, one of the most standard ghost types you will ever see. Much like Cathagoras, really good defenses, not much of a natural bulk but nothing that a little bit of EV training can't cure, and of course being able to torment the other side with confusions, burns, pain splits, all of that fun stuff. The only difference is that Dusk Neuer focuses on more offensive power rather than special attack. And Game Freak really needs to make more ghost types cause it's fun to do. You might require a trade evolution to get one, but it's worth it. And of course, it follows the typical ghost type norm. And the Pokédex entry kind of implies that Dusk Neuer is the Grim Reaper of the Pokémon world. And I also find its design rather unique. However, the huge reason it's here is because of its role within Pokémon Mystery Dungeon. Now of course, I don't want to spoil too much, at least as of now. But if it's not obvious enough, it plays as the main villain. But the way he's portrayed is just presented so well as the main antagonist. If you haven't played the game yet, then I would suggest doing so now. Let's just say, Dusk Neuer is very two-faced. If you know what I mean. Huh. I think I might use this later. And we approached 5th gen's attempt to make another jump off. Was it successful? One word. Yes! To put it simply, Whimsicott is kind of a dick. Being the first Pokemon introduced to the ability Prankster, I think Game Freak ensured that it would have the move pull that would also benefit it the most. What it does is that it makes every non-attacking move a priority. This, in combination of moves such as Encore, Substitute, Taunt, Toxic, Leech Seed, and even more will give the receiving end a really tough time. But if you're the one with the Whimsicott, it's so much fun. It works as a great way to analyze your opponent's moves to ensure that you get the upper hand. And as long as your opponent doesn't carry a move that hits more than once, you should be able to protect yourself. Whimsicott is most likely based off of a Forest Prankster. And given its appearance and abilities, it's most likely saucy from Brazilian folklore. Whimsicott has the ability to slip through any crack despite its size, and they use this ability to prank your household. It also has the ability to carry itself through the breeze. Much like Jumpluff. So give it a hug, or suffer the consequences of having too much salt on your steak. <sighs> Hold on, my lunch is burning. You probably saw this coming a mile away. You knew right from the start that Pikachu would make it on my list. Being the main mascot of Pokemon, it has delved into many of our hearts as children. Statistics wise, it's crap. And though having a light orb would accommodate for its decent speed is not a bad choice, it'll only get you so far and still guaranteeing that one hit KO from most Pokemon. Can be pretty handy in main game though, but that's not why it's here. Of course, there is the Pikachu from the anime, Ash's Pikachu. Pikachu is Ash's main Pokemon and his best friend, who appeared in pretty much every episode of the anime. From the very first episode, I'm sure it really just kept something special to all of us as Pokemon fans right from the beginning, showing us how even the situations that seem near impossible can be overcame. It also showed us how important friendship is. But what I love about Pikachu is just that no matter what, he stuck to the end and counted his losses. Even now, I still feel Pikachu's legacy still continues, showing our children one important lesson in life. Always try, but don't feel down when you lose. However, over the years, Pikachu seemed to get a lot of trivial drawback. Pikachu has become one of those Pokemon that's cool to hate. In fact, I would rank it second in that category if I somehow made a countdown on that subject. Look, I'm not here to change anyone's minds, but hear me out. 
Pikachu has been labeled senselessly as the most overrated Pokemon for reasons I don't feel legit at all. Yeah, there are statements that are factual, but they don't even fit the term. But would you just listen to yourself for a moment and think about it? Pikachu is legitimately one of the most iconic images in video games next to Mario. When you think of Yellow, you probably think of Pikachu. That's because he was commercially advertised so well that made Pokemon take off as one of the most impactful franchises in existence. It's because Satoshi wanted to tell a tale so memorable that when you first saw it, you would keep it in your heart for the rest of your life, and maybe even base your entire life off of it. That is why it's so iconic. Because it is one of the first things you can say in video games, which impacted your childhood. And despite what you may have thought, or think now, Pikachu is still fighting, and he's still showing the spirit that carries from Satoshi, so that one day, we may pass it on to the next generation. That's just how I feel. People who hate on Pikachu are hating on their own childhood, and hating on the same thing that they claim to love. And I'm saying it here because I care about my childhood, and I know that love of Pikachu is there inside of me. It's time to let it back out. This is an odd case for me, because I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it! Oh Caesar, I hate fighting you in meta, but why do you have to be so epic? So Generation 2 is when bug types started to get pretty good, and Caesar was one of the calling points to Game Freak to focus on the balancing of psychic types. In fact, they gave Caesar the steel type, which makes it fulfill the job well. And then Gen 4 came, and some people at Game Freak decided let's make Caesar even more overpowered by giving it Technician. Really Game Freak? 130 base attack power, sword dance, priority bullet punch? I'm glad that I keep a hidden power fire on most of my teams. Caesar's design also gave a huge first impression of what we come to expect out of the Steel type family. Yeah, Scyther was already cool. But Caesar just looks awesome, with that glossy red exoskeleton covering its entire body. There's not much more to say here. Great Pokemon, great design, and as long as your opponent is not a pyromaniac in main game or in battle, you probably won't lose. And here comes the last water type starter you'll ever see on this list. And I do apologize because I'm including the entire line in this case. The Oshawott line is a fine example of how I want more water type starters to be. Mainly because it's leveling up move pull, I honestly didn't find anything that wasn't helpful to me. Which in reality, gave me enough reasons to pick him up again and form a completely different team. With its balanced out special and physical properties, it can make a solid attacker on many different levels. So, let me get this straight. A water type. That isn't the same playthrough every time? I think my dream just came true. I wish I could say the same thing about meta. Because I simply just can't have fun in that field. The line design-wise is also amazing. Oshawa is alright. Simple otter with a samurai sword for a scalp. Doowop falls into the category of one of my favorite mid-evolutions in the entire roster, giving him that dexterous and nimble look and Samurai is a quadrupedic sea lion with samurai sword pouches on its legs, with a helmet that resembles a spear and a manly mustache. Let me remind you that my first samurai was a female. And I also have to ask, why is the 5th gen surf music so awesome?
A unique typing and above decent move pull with great attack power, Crocodile is not a croc you want to mess around with. And with the ability Moxie, it'll only increase its attack power with every knockout it makes. Nothing to increase its speed, but if you decide to scarf it, it will become a threat really quickly. Or you can go a different route, considering it does have Intimidate and Bulk Up, giving heavily physical teams a tough time. Hey, it's a straightforward Pokémon with a couple variations you can use it for regardless if it's in meta or in main game. But I like it mainly for its design, its typing, and partly because of the anime. Crocodile most likely takes inspirations off of both Sand Crocodiles for its concept and Slender Snouted Crocodiles for its design. The design makes it look really intimidating, which is to be expected. And it's another case where I find the colors blend in very well. Its eyes can also focus into binoculars, and its jaws are so powerful, it won't give its prey a second chance. And in the anime, Ash captured it as a Crocorark, and it showed its personality through each of its evolutions. As a sand dial, it was bothering Ash constantly, mainly so it can challenge his Pikachu. As a Crocorark, which was my favorite, it had a sunglasses skit where it would literally lose it when his sunglasses got knocked off and admittedly... It was pretty entertaining. And as a crocodile, well, it's just fun to see it in a fight. So if you find a Pokemon with more swag than the Sandile line, I'd like to see it. Guess they say don't judge a book by its cover. Let's be honest, Shroomish is probably one of the ugliest Pokemon ever. Just What's with that face? But Breloom is admittedly pretty cute, because it's a kangaroo with a mushroom hat. Battle-wise, it's got a lot of variety, mainly thanks to its new Dream World ability. Or as I like to say it, I want to be a Caesar because I'm cuter than him. Wow, they even have the same base power, just not the same broken typing. Anyway, depending on what you want to do, Breloom makes a great choice for battling. With Toxic Heal, it can easily hide behind a sub and dish out the pain. With Technician, so many options. With the ability to easily force out switches, it can low sweep incoming Pokemon and grant it a great advantage. Bullet Seed also works well for sub breaking due to the ability and its high attack power. And hey, even more options. And as long as you can set up for an unpredictable offensive setup, it won't let you down. So wait, anything else for this? Let's see, it's cute, and its battle capabilities make it very fun to use in multiple ways, and... Eh, screw it. I'll just watch my balloon hop around for a little. Boing, 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 America! And here comes my favorite rock type of Gen 5, and falls really close to one of my favorite rock types in general. Already receiving major points because Selene has one, and also has what I love to see in a Pokemon. Crustle is a crustacean, and its most notable feature is the enormous rock hard shell it keeps on its back. This serves as Crustle's portable home that it would always take with it. Considering how large that thing is, these things must be really powerful for their size. Well, at least for its size. Crustle's battle capabilities really show, making it one of the most reliable rock types I have ever seen. With a deadly amount of defense, this will ensure it will take a number of physical hits to take damage for your team and easy setups for stealth rocks. And there's even more this guy can do thanks to Shell Smash, an ability introduced in Gen 5, which can turn your tanks into immediate sweepers, which I've also seen other Pokemon get this benefit as well. And even if you don't want to go that route, you can Rock Polish to make it physically good and defensively great, making it a solid attacker. Both for raising and if you want to battle someone else, Crustle is certainly very reliable. So wait, variety within a Rock type? Gen 5, will you marry me? Oh yeah, now we're talking. 
Deoxys has definitely received a lot of popularity, and it's really not too hard to understand why. When you're discussing unique Pokemon, Deoxys is usually what comes to mind. Deoxys is a space virus that traveled to Earth on a meteor and became a Pokemon. Thanks to its genetic mutations, it can access various forms which all serve their own purpose. Mostly. You want a sweeper? Go with the attack form that literally has no defense. If you need a staller, then defense form is a great option to wall just about anything until people decide to set up on you. And if you want something with a vast amount of utility moves that will ensure Deoxys will always go first, speed form is for you. Also being based off of DNA, Several Pokemon fans have formed the theory that Game Freak intentionally made an acronym. Defense, Normal, Attack, and Speed, or DNAs. Or as I like to say it, SAND! Oh, what? Who? Okay, who put that in my script? Oh, me. I did mention before that I don't feel it's a great thing to base a Pokemon off of stats, and it should be fun to raise, so grinding should not be the essence of service and reward. However, I am putting the exception here, because fucking worth it! last pseudo-legendary you are going to see on this list. And due to how annoying Pokemon fans can get when it comes to pronouncing Pokemon names, I'm just going to use its Japanese name so that people can't hold it against me. So being the latest installment of our pseudo-legendaries, Susandora did a lot more than just be another powerful reptile that destroys everything. Nope, this is the one where I find the options immensely show. However, this also makes it one of the most difficult to use. Thanks to a large amount of both special and physical attack power, this Pokemon is literally a wrecking ball that can potentially one-hit KO or two-hit KO quite literally any Pokemon that Susandora won't even give a second chance of breathing. And just like Dragonite, it has a great potential to stall an amount of Pokemon and even juggle them with Dragon Tail. Its design most likely takes Japanese references to the Orochi, and design-wise makes it look like one of the most monstrous Pokémon in the entire roster. And there's that one other thing. Now, I haven't played the third Mystery Dungeon game yet, and I have heard of a certain role that he takes. I've also heard that it's very touching, and major spoilers come on many major sites. So I'm assuming it's something I have to experience first. But seeing how a favorite of mine is involved with this story does admittedly make me look forward to trying it out. But Susandora is a very good Pokemon overall, and I hope to see another great pseudo-legendary in Gen 6.